The Evora is the car charged with broadening Lotus's customer base to include the kind of people who'd pay serious money for a serious German sports car. To make an impact, it must match quality and comfort with the traditional exhilarating Lotus driving experience. It's been a long time since we've had a Lotus to properly take on Porsche and the most serious of its German sports car rivals. Since the demise of the Esprit back in 2003, the Norfolk maker has bought us uh, a succession of Elise-based track day toys, cars you used on high days and holidays, but little else. The Vauxhall engined Europa of 2007 was a first attempt to bring us an everyday sports car, but it wasn't really a credible contender. This car is the Lotus Evora. Well firsts are something Lotus is pretty used to delivering, which is pretty impressive for a company still to make as many cars in 60 years as say Porsche does every 12 months. Now in this case we're looking at the world's one and only 2 plus 2 mid-engine sports car delivering the perfect handling balance that you only get with the mid-engine configuration and uh, combining it with the practicality of two small rear seats has so far proved to be beyond everyone but the engineers at Hethel. Now combine this with traditional Lotus attributes of lightness, suppleness and total driver involvement and you should have a totally world-beating sports car. But have we here? Let's find out. Now, like the Elise, this Evora relies on Toyota for the contents of its engine bay. But unlike the uh, zingy 1.8 litre VVTi engine found in that impish roadster, the uh, power plant in this case is a 3.5 litre V6 that's previously seen service in the Lexus RX350 luxury 4x4. An SUV engine, not the kind of thing you tend to associate with Lotus, but don't worry. This 256 brake horsepower unit has been thoroughly refettled to give it the kind of edge that Lotus owners will be looking for and a lovely metallic howl. Throttle response has been sharpened through use of a more sophisticated uh, ECU and there's variable valve timing on both the intake and exhaust cams for improved efficiency and flexibility. If you want more, the uh, uh, Sport Pack that I've got fitted to this car gives you sharper throttle response and an extra 400 uh, RPM on top of the usual 6,600 RPM allowed. And uh, you access it via this rather awkwardly situated sport button on the dash. Um, even without this, the Evora has 340 Newton meters of torque, so there's no shortage of muscle that'll see it through 60 in under five seconds on the way to a top speed of 162 miles an hour. The six-speed manual gearbox also comes courtesy of Toyota, but this particular car that I'm driving here um, offers it in pricey extra-cost sports guys with uh, shorter ratios from third to sixth that will make quite a difference for press-on driving enthusiasts. Now, lightweight remains a Lotus keynote, and though at 1,382 kilograms, this car makes some of its rivals look portly, it's still 500 kilograms heavier than an Elise, forcing the Norfolk engineers to turn at last reluctantly to power steering assistance. Still, the helm that they produced uh, makes the steering on other sports cars feel PlayStation-like by comparison. You can feel this car's astonishing grip all the way through every bend, it's brilliant. Better still, there's a suspension set up with this car that manages a balance of ride comfort and handling tautness that I simply wouldn't have believed before driving it. I'd read, you see, that this model is two and a half times stiffer than an Elise and that its um, Ibex springs and Bilstein dampers are set up more firmly. All of which may be true, but the bone jarring ride this ought to produce is uh, replaced by suspension so supple and absorbent that it shames that of some family cars and also makes this an impressive and surprisingly refined long distance cruiser. Yet this is also a suspension setup that on your favourite B road makes this one of the most dynamically capable cars in the world and one of the easiest to manage thanks to a traction control system that only cuts in when you really need it and understeer mitigation technology that even on damp roads has this car turning into corners like a shark turning towards a meal. 
Now the result is for me a completely different league of user-friendly performance. A Ferrari or a Lamborghini might be fun on a dry test track, but would you really look forward to trying to control one at full chat on a wet country road? In an Evora, reassured by astonishingly effective brakes, you'd relish the experience, and that's the difference. The Evora's designers had the unenviable task of trying to reconcile the need for a bewitching exterior along with this car's 2 plus 2 seating configuration and the stringent demands of modern crash tests. The result is an elegantly proportioned car that lacks the Elise's curvy aggression, but still manages to look taut and purposeful. The real innovation, though, lies beneath the bodywork, where uh, the firm's extruded aluminium variable vehicle architecture is employed to increase rigidity and reduce weight. Now under this design, the body panels and the roof are stress-bearing and attached directly to the chassis, helping the Evora achieve its modest curb weight. This car's packaging is also noteworthy. Its wheelbase is only slightly longer than Lotus's little Elise, but it manages to cram in its mid-mounted V6 engine, along with rear seats that Lotus insists are big enough to accommodate passengers of up to five feet in height. You'll probably prefer to restrict their use to small children on short journeys or uncomplaining friends desperate for a lift home from the pub. Or perhaps do without the rear berths completely by specifying the two-seater only 2 plus naught version. Now going that route would of course give you extra luggage space. In this 2 plus 2 variant there's a necessarily compact 160 litre boot that's said to be capable of swallowing a bag of golf clubs but a, a visual appraisal of the space suggests that you may have to melt them down and pour them in. A couple of soft sports bags should be fine though. At least the interior of the car feels spacious and sitting in this Evora really feels like an event. Certainly the quality of build and cabin design is a major departure from the stripped down feel that Lotus has become known for, if not Porsche quality. The, uh, the dashboard is a lovely leather affair in this particular model with a nice two-tone look though the dials do suffer from reflections in strong sunlight. You'll also have to squint a bit to see out of the tiny rear window, which makes paying extra for parking sensors near essential. Still, the driver's seat is supportive and the lovely steering wheel adjusts for both reach and for rake, so it should be possible for just about anyone to get comfortable. Getting in and out, always a Lotus issue, should be relatively straightforward too thanks to a seating position that's 65 millimetres higher than that of an Elise, plus lower sills and taller doors. Depending on the version you choose, it's likely that you'll be paying at or around the £50,000 mark for your Lotus Evora, uh, once you've factored in a few well-chosen extras. If you opt for the two-seater 2 plus naught variant rather than the uh, 2 plus 2, you can save yourself around £2,500. Now, as Lotus always intended, this pitches this model halfway between Porsche Cayman and 911 ownership. Of course, you can go almost as quick as a Evora in a sports coupe that will cost you a lot less, in a Nissan 370Z, for example, or an Audi TTS but their presence never put anyone off uh, buying a super expensive Porsche 911, nor should it here. Whether you choose 2.0 two-seater or 2 plus 2 four-seater of oil models, your car should come reasonably well appointed with features like air conditioning, these lovely body-hugging Recaro sport seats, you've got front electric windows, this magnesium flat-bottom steering wheel, twin airbags, uh, an MP3 compatible CD stereo, and even Isofix child seat mountings for models with rear seats. Now to simplify a long optional equipment list, the major items are grouped together in packs. So you've got a sports pack to sharpen the driving experience, a tech pack, which gives you the seven inch color screen, which marshals the iPod compatible stereo and satellite navigation functions, and a premium pack, which uh, has this gorgeous leather trim, the seat piping, and some special exterior colours. The Evora's lightweight design uh, promises a strong showing in terms of fuel economy and uh, CO2 emissions in comparison with rivals. 
Sure enough, owners should see 32.5 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and a CO2 emissions of 205 grams per kilometre. Now, residual value forecasts uh, suggest that this rare Lotus will hold its value as well as, if not better than, rival Porsches. We shall see. Uh, peace of mind is provided by a three year, 60,000 mile warranty and uh, insurance groups, well, Group 20 is almost inevitable. The Avora is tasked with catapulting Lotus into a totally different sector of the market. Here, agile handling and exhilarating performance alone are not enough, needing to be married into superior build quality and sophisticated design. Now, this car delivers in these last two areas better than any Lotus before it, but will that be enough to justify its £50,000 price tag? You'll need to be a dedicated driver to answer yes, but if you are, there are plenty of other aspects of this car that will tempt you. The brilliant use of space in such a compact frame, the searing performance courtesy of the light weight, the stiff, safe body shell. But most of all, what really matters is that in buying one of these, you'll have ownership of one of the world's greatest driver's cars at any price.